Hi everyone, welcome back. Thank you for joining me. This is the LNS Crafts channel. My name's Lorraine and I'm coming to you from Kent in the UK. On this channel, I talk to you and show you projects, predominantly um, knitted projects, crocheted projects. Sometimes I have a little bit of sewing and some cross stitch. On this occasion, what I have is going to be um, knitting and crocheting because that's what I've been doing since Christmas. So I'm going to kick off with my finished objects and um, I have my little box in front of me with my finished objects in it. So let's get started. First up, I had um, I've had this pattern for a while. What have I done with it? Is it in the box? I think it's in the box. Let's see. Okay. So I've had this pattern. Yeah. This is the Gypsophilia socks pattern. This was kindly given to me by Susan Hardy. Um, she's a viewer and um, she designed the pattern for these Gypsophilia socks and I've had them for quite a while. She also donated a copy to my channel um, for a giveaway, which Victoria Knits one. I hope you're enjoying the pattern Victoria so anyway so I've had the pattern for a while um, because I've been waiting for um, inspiration I guess in terms of yarn I had you know I've been not been buying yarn well before Christmas anyway and so I was kind of trying to work through my stash and then see what yarn would be most suitable to show off the pattern because if you can see that it's got a really pretty pattern on it kind of a lacy pattern and I was trying to find the right yarn to show that off so um, just after Christmas uh, I decided to use some leftover yarn that I had and knit up these socks so let me show you this is what I have got these are the gypsophilia socks and I the yarn what is the yarn oh my goodness I am I'm so out of practice with videos that I just completely forgot that it might be useful if I told you what yarn um, I use for these projects so bear with me if I um, don't have everything to hand which I don't seem to have so I'm gonna have to look on my iPad so the yarn that I have used for this is Bird Street UK Hiddleston Superwash Merino Nylon 7525 um, for this and the color is sugar and maple I used this um, in the Vertices Unite Shawl, the Stephen West Vertices Unite Shawl and um, I had a lot left over so I decided to just use the leftover to make some socks and I chose the Gypsophilia socks so this is what they look like if I can get one of my sock blockers sorry about this very unprepared as usual I've had like a I've been busy cooking and stuff um, today and um, I just thought let me just quickly record a video um, in the time frame that I have I've got maybe 45 minutes so I thought I'd quickly do a video so I'm a little bit unprepared I just got the camera out and the tripod and I just literally sat in front of it to record so forgive my um, unorganized appearance so this is the Gypsophilia socks that's what it looks like um, these were intended to be a size 7 but um, I think I got a bit um, I started to rush a bit when I got down to here I guess and I decided to just finish it up because of the yarn um, I didn't want my yarn to run out because I like to work my socks from the cuff down which is what this, the pattern says to do so basically the Gypsophilia socks pattern is a top cuff down sock pattern with a um, short row heel and my preferred heel is a heel flap and gusset and I do like to do cuff down socks however so when I was working these I really really enjoyed the pattern it's a very easy memorable pattern and I think it looks really pretty and that's what hopefully you can see there that's the pattern it's a lovely lace um, four stitch pattern repeat really nice feels really nice on the um, and then it's a wedge toe I think that's what you call it there which is fine what I didn't like was the heel um, because like I said I prefer a heel flap and gusset type heel so this kind of heel didn't quite doesn't quite work for me and I think and because I got the sizing wrong I messed up on doing the size this has turned out to be more like a size 5 if you can see the heels not placed in the right 
right position so it's turned out to be more of a size five than a size seven which is what my foot size is and what the blockers are and that's why it looks a bit wonky down here um so i'm going to gift these to someone who's a size five i mean they look perfectly fine to me i did mess up a bit on the short row heel because i don't tend to do um short rows um and so i think i may have not i think i didn't follow the pattern correctly at some stage and i had a bit of an issue and i did have a bit of an issue with the hole uh yeah i don't know why i don't usually have issues with the gaps there you know where you, you can see i've got like the, the stitches are a bit looser here i don't usually have this issue when i'm doing my heel flap and gusset so i'm not quite sure what i did wrong there but anyway i followed the pattern as it was written although i think for the pattern it was a longer um leg and i just wanted to do a shorty one because of the amount of yarn i had left but i think that i really really enjoyed the pattern these are going to go to someone who has a smaller foot size than me and hopefully um the the short row heel will fit them nicely anyway so i i like the pattern so much i made a second pair um, but this time I made modification to the heel so that it would be suited more to my taste. And for these, I have, let me see what yarn I used. I think it's bubblegum by, yeah, Craft House Magic Mer Merino Nylon Yarn, fingering weight. And this is the colourway bubblegum. Hopefully you can see it. I've had to use my ring light today because it's really really dark now it's in the evening and otherwise the colors won't show up i really really like the the yarn for this pattern i thought it went quite well for the pattern i would have perhaps chosen a more if i had one in my stash i would have had a, a yarn that was a little not speckled but um what's the word gradient or something like that um tonal would have probably suited the lace pattern a bit better but I wanted to use the bubble gum because that's what I had and so that's what I started with. And so you can see here the heel flap to, is a bit, the depth of the heel is much better fit for my foot. The, um, the short row heel doesn't have the depth there whereas the this one, the heel flap, I can make it as long as I want. And I like to do these at least, what is it, 38 rows for my um heel flap before i start to do the decreases and what have you the shaping so that is what i've got here so essentially what i did i followed the pattern to the letter with the first pair and then with the second pair i used um my own formula so with this one um i used a 64 stitch count um i did the german oh what's it called old norwegian cast on for the cuff i did 20 rows of rib for the cuff then i worked the leg as long as i felt like i wanted it to be then i've inserted my own heel and um, worked down the foot and then the rest is as per the pattern and my needle size for these is 2.25 whereas for this pattern it was 2.75 so slightly different um, gauge with this 2.5 sorry 2.5 millimeters for this and 2.25 for this which is my standard needle size anyway so that's what i've done um these fit perfectly because i am like i said i'm a size seven my heel is a bit deeper so that's what they look like on the blockers and um i actually tried them on as i was going along so it worked out a lot better when i started to shape the toes i think i find that when i haven't made socks for a while i tend to forget where to stop the foot and change for the toe um, unless I actually keep trying it on because even though um, I tried it on the blockers it didn't quite I, I, I don't know what I did wrong but I, I was kind of measuring my toe to be say here start my toe decreases from here but it just didn't the difference between putting it on this and putting it on my actual foot was quite quite a big difference and I ended up having to um, unravel back would you call it now rip it back and uh, frog it that's the word <laughs> had to frog it back a bit um, before I started the 
toes because I had knit too much when I was trying it using just the block out to measure the size so that's a little bit of a tip for myself or note to self so anyway so that's those two the gypsophilia socks then I've done another two pairs of socks since then I've been on a bit of a sock roll um, if you can't tell so I have made I think these ones I made before the gypsophilia but these are high ho silver yarn by Willy mama yarns I use this for my daughter's boxy little boxy jumper um, and I had leftover I've still got leftover yarn I have quite a lot of leftover yarn from that so I thought I'd make a pair of socks and then um, I wanted a contrasting heel I did actually want a contrasting cuff toe and heel but um, I didn't I don't know why I only did the heel I think I was just eager to cast them on and I didn't want to do the pink for some reason I don't know for some reason I've only done the heels but as I said this is it's my standard formula 64 stitches 2.25 millimeter needles and um, with a heel flap and gusset so yeah I really like how these turned out so the, the like I said this one's Hi Ho Silver by Willy Mama Yarns and this one is if I can get it up on my screen uh, the Knitting Swede and it's called a Spartan and this was um, a yarn that I won in a giveaway and I think it is a let's see what is it a blue face Leicester 100% blue face Leicester so we'll see how that works out in terms of durability because um, I'm not quite sure um, if it's going to be strong let me show you this one of them on the blocker just so you can see there we go and that's what it looks like on the blocker normal wedge toe standard heel flap and gusset short I'm liking shorty socks um, at the moment I like them to be like short here and I think that in my next few pairs of socks I'm gonna make the leg a bit longer because my legs are always cold so I think I'm gonna try making some long socks and actually I had it in mind to make some double knit um, weight socks because those are quite um, nice and warm I've got one pair of those um, that I have in my collection stash and I really enjoy wearing those in the colder months but yeah so that's those so that's socks number three then I've done these ones very similar um, I got this yarn in a giveaway again so this one is um, let me just get it up on my screen I really apologize for having to keep looking at my screen but it's been a while um, so Artisano Hummingbird 4 ply yarn is this one I made a hat out of this yarn before Christmas and um, I still had some of the yarn left over and so I decided to make the socks I've still got a little bit of yarn left over I'm not quite sure what to do with it because it's not enough to make socks I don't think it's enough to make a hat um, I might just put it into a scrappy blanket or something I don't know but yeah so this is an alpaca I think let me just double check that is it yeah 100% alpaca this one so it's really soft I don't know if you can see how fluffy that is let me bring it back a bit can you see how fluffy that is it's a really really soft yarn so I wanted to make socks with it but then I thought I need to have like a nylon based yarn or a nylon mix yarn for the heel to make it a bit firmer tougher so I added in this heel and the yarn is the I think it's Coop Knits yeah yeah Coop Knits sock yeah this color and it is what color is it Let's see if I can find the color uh, topaz this this yarn is called turtle dove and this one is called topaz and this one is has got nylon in it this is merino nylon 7525 so I've done the heels cuff and toes in the coops knits yeah this one like I said I had issues with the length of the foot and when to stop and are these what did I write these are a six or a seven I think I stopped short on one foot and and went a bit longer on the other so I'm calling them a six slash seven so these are not going to be for me so that's what they look like on the blocker I think they turned out all right as you see I mentioned before that I was having problems with the 
the holes around here on the other socks. I don't have it when I do the heel flap because of the way I pick up my stitches. So I'm not quite sure what I did wrong on the short row um, heel, but I don't know. I don't know. Let me know if, if you think you can figure out what I did wrong with that. I didn't pull it tight enough or something. I really don't know. But those are my socks. Those are my socks finished objects. I also finished up this hat. And this one is... Let me put this in front of me. That might be easier. Let's see if I can find the project. So... This one is Jason's cashmere hat and the yarn I use for this is a Lauren Cakewell. I got the yarn from um, Wilkinson's, otherwise known as Wilco's. And um, I saw it as a like, a, it's like a purple grape kind of colour. I thought it looked really nice and I've really been enjoying using the Jason's cashmere hat um, pattern, which is a free pattern on Ravelry and I'd made a couple of hats before in navy blue and then um, when I got this yarn I thought oh this would look nice in a hat as well so I've done the hat have I got I don't know what I've done with the I think I used the whole ball it's a hundred gram skein of yarn and I used the whole ball with a, a little tiny bit left because I did the pom-pom out of that as well and the pom-pom was made using one of those clover um, pom-pom makers the large size um, let me show you what it looks like on my head and I think it's really cute and this is going to be a gift for somebody um, but I really like the Jason's cashmere hat pattern it's a really good really quick easy knit in my opinion with the cables as you can see there and the double brim makes it really warm um, this yarn is is it I'm not sure if it's yeah it's Aran weight yarn this one so it's really warm nice and thick and warm and um, I need to get this gifted but I wanted to show it on the on the channel before I did that so that is my other finished object I really was enjoying making hats just after Christmas and just slightly before Christmas and just after because they're a quick knit for me and um, so I was buying yarn to make the hats and I thought it would be best to buy commercial yarn because the people that I'm gifting these to will not appreciate the hand dyed yarn and that they have to wash it carefully um, as it's you know merino wool and, and single ply and all that kind of stuff so I thought that I would just use a commercial yarn which makes it easier to wash they can just shove it in the washing machine and they're good to go and I don't think I didn't actually think about this until now, but I've sewn the pom-pom on rather than making it a detachable pom-pom. So, well, hopefully she'll look after it anyway. But yeah, that is that hat. The last finished object I have to show with you that I'm really, really pleased and proud of is this blanket that I've been working on. So this is a crochet item. I've bagged it up. Um, I have mentioned before that I was working on this blanket, um, which is... Um, on the basis of the Nature's Walk make-along by Cherry Heart Podcast. She came up with this make-along called the Nature's Walk blanket and it has a number of different square patterns in it and I chose one um, to use for... I don't, I don't have the pattern to hand. I chose one to use for this blanket and I stuck to one but I made lots of different squares. So I've got three different colours. Um, the yarn is all from B&M which is a commercial yarn and it's a store um, in the UK and the yarn was, how much was it, about one ninety nine a ball, something like that, let's see it's Aran weight yarn, not even one ninety nine. so it's three ninety nine a ball but it comes up, actually they're all different weights and sizes but essentially they're Aran weight and they're like this brand trim this one was a big um, ball of yarn, that's the 300 gram and that was 3.99 but they came in smaller sizes. So anyway, the, so the price is gonna vary. But I used Aran weight for this project and the blanket is pretty big. I posted pictures on my Instagram account um, and I asked you guys what you thought about um, the layout because I wasn't sure how to lay it out. I had an idea in mind but I posted, this is the funny thing, I posted pictures on the Instagram with two different layouts and asked you guys what you thought was the best layout to use and 
all of you with the exception of one person said I should use this layout that I have chosen so that's what you know so that's what I've gone with and so I have two different types of grey I've got dark grey and a light grey and then I've got navy blue and the square is called berry and it's by um like i said it's part of the nature's walk blanket um make along that's what it looks like and it's from cherry heart podcast it's a free pattern on ravelry so if you're interested in making a blanket out of you know the same as this then that's where you'll find it on ravelry or maybe um if you email or Instagram Cherry Heart Podcast. Maybe she has another way of getting the pattern to you if you're interested. There were, I think, six different squares that you used to make up her Nature's Walk blanket. But like I said, I chose one and stuck to one for the whole blanket and um, kind of improvised as I went along. So it's quite a big blanket. I can't get it all in shot. If I can, I'll try and insert a picture of what the whole thing looks like. But this is what it looks like. This is the edging I've used. Um, if you want information on the edging I can share that with you and I've put it in my um, notes on Ravelry in my Ravelry project so you can see how I've done that edging that was by the edging I got from oh, what's that woman called I can't remember her name the something something show <laughs> I can't remember her name but um, she was the first person I followed in for crochet projects on YouTube. The something in stitching show. I'm sorry, I can't remember it. If I if I remember it, then I will stick it up on the screen. But um, yeah, she was the one that came up with this border, and I used it for another blanket. And then I just kind of tried to remember how I did it by looking at my other blanket, and just kind of winged it really. But that's what it looks like and I'm really pleased with the way it turned out and it's quite big it's not quite a single bed size but it's big enough to cover two people I think while you're sitting on the sofa and that's the intention so yeah it's basically if you can do um, crochet and if you can do um, double crochet treble crochet and that's it isn't it that's all that's in it it's just double crochet and triple cro triple crochet and chains then you can make this blanket really really easy and not quick it's taken me I think I started this in August so it has taken a long time to make it but I mean look at the size of it and I'm really pleased with the end result and I'm really hopeful that the person who gets this or people that are getting it are going to be really pleased with it because they're not expecting it so I think they're going to be super chuffed with that so yeah so that is my those are my finished objects um moving on to works in progress so I have as you can see here my other blanket so this one is the corner to corner blanket that I've been working on for a long time and it's a scrappy project so I use up any leftover double knit yarns that I have and I am working with two strands of double knit so I've got the cream which is all the way through I've been using a cream or a white or uh, what else yeah cream or white generally throughout as a base color and then um, to for my second strand of yarn I'm using a color so a solid color usually but I have yeah I think they're yeah they're all solid colors I've used solid colors and the cream and it's quite big now but it's still I did start to shape up here I don't know if you can see that I started to shape up here um, so I can finish it off and make it more rectangular but I've still got all of that to go it's look we are here all this and that is where it's squared off so I've got quite a way to go before I finish this blanket um, but yeah I'm pleased with how it's turning out this one is um, it's not intended for any particular person I had planned to do this and donate it to charity um, as a scrappy blanket I'm not sure that 
it's going to be done um, in time for till the end of this winter. I think this is likely to be a project that is going to be of benefit and finished uh, in time for next winter. So we shall see because I'm just relying on scraps that I have left over from other projects to work on um, with this. I've got mainly blues left over because I've been making the blues from that blanket. I was thinking about just adding in the leftover Aran weight yarn that I have and putting it with this but I'm not sure how it's going to work out in terms of the stretch because it's a different weight because these are DK weight and what I've got is Aran weight it might change the um, dimension of it and I don't want it to mess that up so I may I'll give it a try with maybe one and see one of the yarns and see how it works out and if that doesn't work out I'll just have to rip it back and try something else wait till I get some more DK weight yarn but the colours that I'm on now are blues that's what I've got um, in my stash blues to to complete the blue section um, I don't have any other kind of brighter colours that I've worked on that are solid colours at the moment so every time I run out of a colour um, it kind of sits on hold waiting for me to use something else that is a solid colour to finish it off so that's how that one's going that's going quite well um, what else have I got that's a work in progress I'm not sure if I show oops dropping things I'm not sure if I showed you this one I had decided to do the autumn square by Hinterm Stein which is let me see if I can find the pattern is it here it should be in here actually I had leftover yarn from the Vertices Unite shawl and I love the colours in that shawl so I decided to just make a top out of them a nice scrappy top and like I said the top in question is called Autumn Square it doesn't have a picture of the front that's annoying um, oh dear I can't, I'll have to see if I can get it up on my um, iPad that's a picture of the back of it it's a paid for pattern so I can't show you all of that other stuff that's the picture of the back of it. Let me see if I can get it up on here. Then I can show you. Um, here we go. Let's see. So it looks, I really like the look of it. I've been looking at this for a while since I made that um, V-neck summer top, which was a Hinterm Stein pattern. Um, I decided to see what other patterns she had that I would like um, because I liked the way they were laid out. They were very well organised patterns and very easy to follow. And I came across the Autumn Square. And this is what it looks like. So that's one picture. Um, I really liked that. Let me see if I can find another one. There you go. Very simple. Just a mixture of stocking stitch or garter stitch for this top. Long sleeved. And it's got like a drop shoulder there. You can see the the sleeve comes literally. It stops, starts there, and goes downwards. So um, other people have done. I like to look at other people's projects to see how it's going to look on me. So I try and find someone with a similar kind of shape to me, and then decide whether or not it's going to suit my figure. And there were quite a few on here, and they I think they looked really nice. Um, so I decided to give it a go and the colours they use I mean look at this one this one's really oh is that gone oh bother never mind so my one is made out of scrappy yarns instead of a solid colour and it's coming along nicely I'm halfway there so this is what it's looking like at the moment this is the front and I have used a mixture of yarns for this um, all of them are fingering weight yarn it's a fingering weight yarn project so because it's um because it's coming into we will be going into spring or some by the time I finish this I thought I'd make a lightweight kind of jumper because in my stash I have um, like chunky jumpers Aaron jumpers DK jumpers and cardigans but I don't have anything fingering weight so I thought I'd give that a try this time and the yarn I've used up is Biff Sugar Yarns um, what's it called? Kelpie, which is this one. Really nice colour here. It come, it makes such a lovely garter stitch project. I really love the way that looks. So that's Kelpie. Then we've got um, what's the next one? Felt Fusion, and this one is Forest Walk. Walk Forest Walk. I have this again to do the sleeves, but it's a different. 
um, because I ran out of yarn here in the project I used the leftovers um, I've had to order in another forest walk and the tone uh, the, the shade of color is slightly different so whereas that is that's quite a lot darker this is the replacement that I have um, but I figure because it's going in the sleeves which will be here it should be fine and I'll just blend it with the brown anyway so that is um, forest walk by felt fusion then I've got Jelly Beans Yarns, this colour here, which is called Dollar. Um, that's more of a tonal colour. This one is speckled and this one is more tonal. This has got lots of different colours in it. This is just a straight green, but it's tonal. Um, as is the brown here. This brown is called Gone to Earth and this is by Biff Sugar Yarns as well. Um, that's what it looks like. So all of these yarns I used in the Vertices Unite shawl. Um, these were leftovers and I thought I'd just make a top out of them, a jumper out of them. And that's where I am. So I'm down at the bottom. I've just finished the first um, garter hem section here, which has taken quite a while. Um, and this is the front. So I need to finish the back and make the back the same length so that's where I am and then once I've done that I can move on to the sleeves and the plan for the sleeves is to use the felt fusion um, forest walk for the sleeves blended with a gone to earth in each case so I should be able to get two pairs of sleeves I've got another one here just mix them mix and match them I'm thinking of just doing alternate rows this and that and see how that looks and if I don't like it then I'll probably have to order some more gone to earth or and just slowly kind of fade it a little bit I'm not great at fading but you know I don't I don't mind I don't mind how it looked I did try and fade the colors here but you can kind of see where they change a bit but I don't care I really like the way it's looking it feels really nice and soft It's very nice and lightweight and I'm pleased with it and I think that I actually would make this again in a solid colour. So, yeah, it's a really good pattern. Really easy. And the, it fits really nicely. I've tried it on a number of times. The neck is just perfect for me. I love the neck. And it's a, um, what do you call it, neck? I called neck here, which is really nice. The way that she designs these patterns, she has really kind of interesting ways of adding just a little bit of detail to the pattern. Um, to make it just look a little bit sharper you know I can't really explain what it is because it's a paid for pattern but go and have a look at the pattern on um, Ravelry if you're on there and you'll see what I mean that it just looks really professional and I really love the way that her patterns seem to do that um, so yeah so that is Hinterm Stein and it's Autumn Square can you see that that's the pattern there so I'm not going to be doing any show notes for this video because um, I think this is going to be long enough already so that's what I have been working on this is one of my whips I only have two whips apart from well two knitting whips at the moment and that crochet one well no three crochet ones actually but I'm not going to show you the other one because I just it's in the cupboard and I just can't be bothered to get that one out just now I'll show you that in the next um, video but where is it now so the socks I had decided I have yarn left over from these socks so I decided to make another pair but this time I'm just gonna I wanted to just knit um, the whole yarn I just wanted to to use up all the yarn so I thought I would just knit a sock tube and then do all the bits afterwards so add in the heels and the toes afterwards because what I do I knit the cuff first and I've used a contrasting yarn this one is Coop's Yeah the same one that I used for these socks I'm using this for the contrast on this so I've done it for the um, cuffs and I've had to do them quite small because that's all I've got left and I'm not sure how much I was going to get out of this I don't think I'm going to get toes out of this so I think this is just going to have to um, sit in my stash until I can find a use for this because there's not enough to do anything with it to my knowledge anyway so I knit the whole sock in one and I have just recently split the two 
um, to make the socks so now I've just got to figure out where to add in my heel and what to do with the toes and whether or not I want a contrasting heel um, because I was thinking about perhaps adding a pink in there or if I'm just going to have to rip some of the socks back mm, I'm not going to get a heel yeah I haven't thought too far ahead on this as you can tell I was thinking about adding in a pink heel just because that's what I've got left um, which I could still do but then I was kind of wondering whether to do the pink heel or pink toes. Um, either way, I think I'm going to have to, if I do the contrasting heels and toes, then I'll be fine for yarn. But if I'm going to keep with this yarn, because I've literally, I have actually run out of the bubblegum yarn, then I'm going to have to rip back if I want the toes in this yarn. Um, and I can't really do the heels in this yarn because I don't have any, so I would have to rip back. So yeah, I've got to think about this. Um, I've split, like I said, I've split for split in the middle because um, I'm ready to insert heels and and toes. But I've just got to make some decisions about what kind of toes to put in, um, what contrast colour to put in, and if a contrast toe and yeah what I just said a minute ago so that's where I am with that and these are my standard sock 64 stitches um, the ribbon is 2x2 two two rib although it's not as long as I like it to be it's, this is only 10 rows of rib and then it's just straight stocking stitch and I just did it like that I knit them like this and then just did the contrasting um, cuff on the bottom and then bound off there so this is what I had and I've just cut them in the middle. So yeah, watch this space to see what happens with these. Um, that is it. Those are all of the things that I've been working on or have finished up. Um, I don't think I've got any incoming to show you that I can think of off the top of my head. And I've run out of time, I think now my battery is about to die. So I'm gonna leave it there. Um, I am trying to think about my um, regular routine of recording for this channel so I've been trying to make a decision as to whether I upload um, on a specific day each month so I was thinking that perhaps just to be a little bit more regular or a little bit more organized I would try and record and say try and upload a video say the first Sunday of every month or something like that first Saturday of every month just so that you guys know kind of when to come back and check out the channel um, it's not gonna my ch my videos are not gonna increase in number I'm not gonna not likely to be recording every two weeks or every week because that's just too much for me with everything I have going on so the likely thing is I'll stick to my once a month video because then I can watch other video podcasts and I can enjoy my knitting in between and all the other things I've got going on in my life and um, it also I feel that it gives you guys an opportunity to watch my video um, because it'll only be the one and it won't be loads that you've got to kind of keep on top of you'll just have one each month and know that you haven't missed anything um, you know it just makes it easier for me and I think for you because you can always watch my one video so yeah and I'm going to try and keep them short so we shall see how I get on with that um, but yeah I wanted to say a big thank you to everyone for your get well wishes that you sent on Instagram um, I did post on there that I'd been suffering with a really really bad cold and um, I had so many lovely well wishes on there um, that was really gratefully received so thank you for that it did make me feel a bit better you know and um, yeah yeah I'm still I'm at the end of the cold now the cold has more or less gone but um, it my asthma is still not quite as as regular or not regular as controlled as I'd like it to be let's say that so I'm still trying to deal with the asthma part of my cold but everything else has gone then the runny nose and everything else has gone so I feel a lot better so thank you for your well wishes um, but yeah that is it 
that is all I have to show you. Like I said, no income in this time round. I think I'm going to leave that for the next video if I've got anything coming in. Um, hopefully you guys had a good Christmas and New Year um, if you celebrated and the year has got off to a good start for you. Um, but yeah, I'm going to leave it there and hopefully I will see you in about a month's time. So watch this space. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. It won't cost you anything. And um, hopefully you'll get notified when I upload a new video. Um, if you click the little bell button. I know that sometimes that doesn't work because it doesn't always work for me. But I guess you stand more of a chance of it working if you actually click the button. So give it a try and see how you get on if you'd like to be subscribed to my channel so that you can see more of what I've been working on. But that is it. Yeah, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye for now.